You hear it everywhere these days. IIoT is here. SCADA's dead. They're telling you to rip out those reliable systems you've trusted for years and jump headfirst into the cloud. Well, after 35 years of keeping plants running, I'm here to tell you it's not that simple. Not even close. Let's cut through the hype and talk about what really works out here in the real world. For those of you just joining my channel, I'm Alana. For 35 years, I've been wrangling everything from PLCs and drives to complex SCADA systems. Water treatment, power generation, manufacturing, you name it, I've probably troubleshot it at 3 a.m. So, in the next 12 minutes or so, we're going to cover a fast refresher on what SCADA and IIoT actually do. Why, despite the hype, SCADA isn't going anywhere for critical control. How IIoT can seriously supercharge your existing SCADA system. The three biggest integration potholes I see every single week and how to dodge them. I will provide a real-world example from one of my projects, which helped the plant save over 50 grand a year. All right, lightning refresher, let's get our terms straight. SCADA, supervisory control and data acquisition. Think of it as your plant's nervous system for real-time operation. It's about reliable deterministic control, meaning when you tell that valve to close, it closes now, not maybe later. It uses robust, often isolated networks and hardware built for harsh environments, built for control. IoT, the industrial internet of things. Think of billions of smart sensors, actuators, and devices grabbing all sorts of data often wirelessly, sending it up to the cloud for analysis, finding trends, and giving you the bigger picture. It uses standard internet protocols, cloud platforms. It's flexible and scalable, built for insights. Different tools, different strengths, but ultimately they share the same mission, keeping your process running safely, efficiently, and reliably. So why isn't IIoT simply taking over? Because for the core job of controlling the process, SCADA has strengths that IIoT, in its current form, often can't match. First, deterministic control. When you're dosing chemicals in drinking water, controlling pressure in a pipeline, or managing a critical safety interlock, you need guaranteed response times, often in milliseconds. Sending a command up to the cloud and back just isn't an option for that critical loop. If that pump must start in 300 milliseconds to prevent a problem, you need SCADA's direct line. I've seen delays cause major headaches, and you just can't risk that on critical loops. Second, network security and robustness. Traditional SCADA networks, Modbus, DNP3, Profinet, were often designed to be isolated, air-gapped. They use protocols built for reliability over noisy industrial channels. While IIoT can be secured, SCADA's historical design provides a different, often more rugged and isolated layer of operational security right out of the box. Third, safety and regulatory compliance. SCADA hardware, your PLCs, your RTUs, your safety relays, often comes with certifications like UL, CSA, or SIL ratings. These aren't just stickers. They represent rigorous testing for reliability and failure modes crucial for safety critical applications. You know it's built and tested for the job. And finally, proven track record. Call me old school, but I've seen SCADA RTUs humming along reliably for 20, even 30 years in nasty environments. Some newer IIoT gateways? Let's just say I've seen my share needing resets or failing unexpectedly in ways that older gear just doesn't. Reliability is paramount in our world. Okay, so SCADA's the backbone, but here's where it gets exciting. IIoT can absolutely make your SCADA system way smarter. Think of it as adding powerful new senses and intelligence. Here's how I see it adding value every day. Wider data lens. SCADA typically monitors core process variables. IIoT lets you easily add tons of other sensors. Wireless vibration on pumps, temperature on remote bearings, energy consumption on individual machines, acoustic sensors listening for leaks, things that were too expensive or complex to wire back before. Suddenly you see so much more about your asset health. Remote reach. Got assets way out in the field? 
Pump stations, tanks, wells, running fiber, or even reliable radio was often cost prohibitive. IoT technologies like cellular or low power wide area network, like long range wide area network, make connecting those remote assets for monitoring much more feasible. I've used such technology to bring data back from places we never could before. Cloud power and AI. This topic is a big one. You can push all that extra IIoT data and even selected SCADA data to the cloud. Up there, powerful analytics platforms, even AI can crunch the numbers, spot subtle trends and predict failures before they happen. Like that bearing starting to whine before the operator even hears it. Your SCADA system might trigger an alarm when it fails. IIoT can help you fix it before it fails. Easier integration, sometimes. Modern IIoT often uses open standards like MQ Telemetry Transport, MQTT, or OPC UA. These can often be integrated alongside your legacy SCADA protocols using gateways or edge devices, allowing new and old systems to talk without ripping everything out. If you plan it right, more on that in a second. My rule of thumb, I tell everyone, let SCADA run the plant reliably. Let IIoT tell you how the plant is running. Find efficiencies and predict problems. They work together. Now merging these two worlds isn't always plug and play. I see folks stumble into the same traps over and over. Here are the three biggest potholes and how you can dodge them. Security gaps. This is huge. Your old SCADA might have been air-gapped safe in its own little world. The moment you connect IIoT devices, especially cloud-connected ones, you've potentially opened a door. My advice, don't just punch holes, implement proper network segmentation, use DMZs, demilitarized zones, and industrial firewalls, one-way data diodes, and maybe even look at zero trust architectures. Treat every connection as potentially hostile. Security cannot be an afterthought. Latency, determinism, and confusion. Remember SCADA needs millisecond control? Don't try to run your critical loops through an IIoT cloud connection. Understand the difference. My advice, use edge computing. Put smart gateways at the edge near the process to handle rapid decisions or data pre-processing. Let the edge device talk reliably to the PLC or RTU for control. Send only the non-critical trend data or summary information up to the cloud for analysis. Keep control local. Legacy entanglement? Trying to get a 20-year-old PLC using Modbus RTU to easily share data with a shiny new MQTT-based sensor isn't always straightforward. My advice, plan ahead, map out your existing SCADA tags and your desired IIoT data points early. Understand the protocols. You will likely need protocol converters, middleware, or smart gateways maybe even PLC firmware upgrades. Budget time and money for this integration layer, it's where projects often get bogged down. Let me give you a real world example. We had a client with several remote water booster stations, fairly standard SCADA setup, RTUs reporting basic pressures, flows, and pump status back over licensed radio. Reliable, but minimal insight. The problem? These pumps were critical and bearing failures led to expensive, unplanned shutdowns. We couldn't easily get vibration data back through the old RTUs. So, what did we do? We didn't rip out the SCADA. Instead, we augmented it. We added simple, battery-powered, long-range, wide-area network vibration and temperature sensors directly onto the pump casings, maybe $200 a pop. These sensors sent their data wirelessly to a small edge gateway installed at the station. That gateway did two things. First, it pushed the detailed trend data, vibration spectrum, temperature history, up via cellular to a cloud dashboard. Maintenance could now see detailed health information from anywhere. Second, the gateway did some local analysis. If vibration crossed a preset warning level, it sent a simple digital alarm signal back to the existing SCADA RTU's input card. So, the critical high vibration warning still appeared on the main SCADA HMI screen, where operators would see and acknowledge it immediately. The result? In the first year, the IIoT devices predicted two major bearing failures weeks in advance, allowing scheduled maintenance instead of emergency callouts. Saved them roughly $50,000 in overtime, potential damage, and emergency repairs. 
SCADA kept control. IIoT provided the predictive insight. That's the power of using them together. All right, let's wrap this up. What's the real story? Can IIoT replace SCADA for critical control right now? No, it cannot. SCADA is still king for reliable, deterministic, real-time control. But IIoT is an incredibly powerful enhancement. Think of it this way. SCADA gives you the control. IIoT gives you the context, the depth, and the reach for data. When you use them together intelligently, you get the best of both worlds. Better uptime, deeper insights, improved safety, and predictive maintenance. So how do you start? My biggest piece of advice, start small and start secure. Don't try to boil the ocean. Pick one non-critical asset or process. Add a simple IIoT sensor for monitoring, maybe temperature, vibration, or energy use. Integrate it carefully, perhaps using an edge gateway feeding data into a historian or cloud platform via a secure connection, maybe through a DMZ. Learn the ropes. And please, please do harden your security before you connect anything. No exceptions. That's non-negotiable in my book. Okay, that's the lowdown on IoT and SCADA from my perspective. If you found this breakdown helpful, do me a favor and hit that like button. It really helps the channel. And if you want more practical tips and insights straight from the field, make sure you subscribe for more SCADA and beyond with Alana. Got questions about this? Or maybe a specific integration challenge you're facing? Drop it in the comments below. I read them all, and I'll try to tackle common questions in future videos. Until next time, keep those loops tight, keep your data flowing, and always, always keep your systems secure. Thanks for watching.